Hello, this is a short video on the three uh, best, most effective things that you can do for plantar fascia pain. That's pain in the sole of your foot. We are Witty Paskin Buckingham, Chartered Physiotherapists in Northampton. We have been the leading physiotherapy clinic in the region for 40 years. We treat bone, joint, muscle, tendon, ligament and nerve issues all over the body. Using manual and manipulative treatment techniques, shockwave and exercise regimes, we work to get you back to full health as quickly as possible. The plantar fascia is a thick strip of fibre that runs from the heel bone to the front of the toes. It commonly gets sore on this inside part of the heel down here. Plantar fascia pain is caused by the foot rolling in, pronation. It causes overload on the inside part of the heel, damaging, overloading the tissue into there, laying down little micro tears and little bits of scar tissue on top of that. Uh, it, that scar tissue then gradually becomes more inflexible and becomes inflamed and sore, causing the pain. The pain is described as anything from a burning sensation through to a very sharp nail being driven into the foot. And it can be worse in the mornings, particularly getting out of bed when that scar tissue has had the opportunity to, to stiffen up overnight and it takes longer to get going. Uh, equally, after being sat for periods of time during the day, it can be difficult to get going. Um, the next exercises are the things that we can do to, uh, to take this thing further. When to seek help? Certainly if you've got sharp pain, certainly if you've got stabbing pain going on through the foot. Uh, if it's been going on for more than a few weeks and is not getting better, and if you're starting to limp uh, and, and to struggle out of bed in the morning, that's the time to, to get it looked at. Finally, if it started suddenly, if it started with a jump or a heavy landing on it and suddenly it was either at that moment or something the next day, then again that's damage, that's proper tear damage to the tissue and again that needs to be fully assessed by a chartered physio to, to work out what you've done. If you're at the point though where it's intermittent, stiffness in the morning, it gets better as the day goes on as you've walked on it, these next exercises are the best place to start. The first thing you can do is that the, the tissue in here needs to become more flexible. It needs to get more tolerant to load. You can start that with fingers and thumbs and you can do this either yourself or get somebody to, to work into it. And certainly a chartered physio would be uh, one of their uh, first ports of call to get that going. You can also use uh, rollers, whether that be a golf ball, whether it be a frozen bottle of water that you can get into there and work the foot into, into that tightness. Couple of minutes, couple of times a day. If it's quite sore initially, I would do it every other day rather than uh, on, on a consecutive days, just to allow that tissue to change. Type one collagen fiber takes a couple of days to change. So work it, work it hard, and give it a chance to change. Exercise two is calf rise strength work off of a step. The calf and Achilles tendon runs as a continuum into the plantar fascia in the foot, and, and calf strength work loads through the plantar fascia just as well as it does in the calf. Three lots of 25 single leg calf raises is a minimum for most people to consider that they have good strength in their calf muscles. Off of a step, slowly lower and rise, three lots of 25 repetitions on that single leg. It will take a few weeks to build the strength. Once you get to being able to cope with body weight, I would then suggest putting some loading on it, whether you're holding a 5K, 10K dumbbell and build that as you go along. For running, three lots of 25 with ideally up to 25 kilograms single leg is a good baseline. If you haven't got a step, a book works just as well uh, and often people can find that that's easier to set up. Make sure when you drop all the way down that you bend your knee right into it at the bottom of the range to get the full stretch in the Achilles tendon before you then rise right the way back up as high as you can to tiptoes. Third exercise is regarding arch strength, the strength of the muscles on the inside part of the foot and your ability to hold that arch uh, against the forces of your weight coming down on it when you land on it. Tibialis posterior is the main muscle for this and it runs down from the inside part of the shin here around the back of the ankle bone and attaches onto this point in the foot. Its job is to hold that arch up but particularly in this case to decelerate that pronation uh, as you come down onto the foot. You strengthen it 
very simply by placing TheraBand, elastic band, over the big toe, shut it into the door. The key is keeping these locked together. Ideally have the feet a little further away, so you've got the foot pointing downwards as opposed to being held right up here. And then the movement is just the foot turning in, just the foot in and then out against the band. You need to set it up so that 15 of these is really tough. Soon as it becomes easy, you need to increase that tension on the band by moving further away from its fixed tension point. There is an obsession by a lot of videos, a lot of uh, practitioners about giving stretches for the calf for something like a plantar fascia. Yes, if the foot can't get beyond 90 degrees, then stretch it because you have a tight calf. But in my experience, you find that actually plantar fascia is caused more by weakness of the calf and weakness particularly of these tip post muscles we spoke about a moment ago. Uh, and that's the real cause because it's that collapsing in that overloads it. Yes, tightness, if it's present, can cause the foot to rotate as well. But really, in most cases, it's the weakness. So treat the weakness first, unless you're absolutely sure you've got tightness. If after these exercises, you've worked for a few weeks with it and it's not settling, then it needs to be checked further. We need to look at the reasons behind it, which are often biomechanical, that can come from issues up in the back and the hip, weakness around the glutes, all the reasons why this leg is, is collapsing and rolling in. We need to also consider if there has been so much damage in the plantar fascia that we need further uh, manual therapy to it, or even treatments like shockwave, which is something you get done by charter physiotherapist. Uh, we need also to decide if we need any imaging, anything that needs to be checked out for any bony spurs that can, can occur in there. Bony spurs are often held as being a big problem in plantar fascia, but again, in my experience, if treated properly, they don't have to be uh, a, a major problem. And most of the time, plantar fascia can be sorted out with a good treatment over a period of a few weeks with a charter physiotherapist and no surgical interventions are required.